ruins, abandoned houses, and relics, searching out the souls of those past, seeking proof of the existence of the other side, the spirit world. Each door I opened led to another. When I began, I thought I was in control, but I'm starting to wonder. Like a beacon they call, and we come, trying to understand, trying to decipher their disembodied voices. Hell's Gate, it's legend. A horrific turn of the century locomotive crash, forever entangling the victim's souls of the area around the tracks. Even simple graffiti takes on meaning, an invitation to those lurking in the past. And then come the shadows. A trick of light, maybe. But I pause as if to become invisible. But my bones tell me that the shadows still see still see me. This house was one of the first homes in the county, and in its day, was the central hub of this farming community. Festivals and gatherings long ago occupied the grounds of this majestic dwelling, but those sites have long since faded. According to the home's current owner, when an outbreak of smallpox came through in the late 1800s, those stricken were sent here to convalesce 
those less fortunate, who passed on, were buried on the property. There are roughly 200 bodies buried in the backyard. Some of the headstones can still be found. The new owners call it Black Moon Manor and have hopes of transforming the old homestead into a haunted house. But the spirits here seem to have a different plan. They've given them much more than they bargained for. I lived here for 11 years, back when I was a child. What was it like when you were a kid? you remember seeing things? I saw quite a bit. Um, I used to hear strollers roll across the uh, dining room floor, but there'd be nobody in there. I'd be scared to death to fall asleep. It's a fascinating house. It's just absolutely beautiful. Doors upstairs, opening and shutting. You'd see bright lights on the, on the doors and nothing there. Numerous people tell me this through talking in town, this place was haunted after I had acquired it. A lot of crazy stuff, you know, dogs barking at the top of the stairs. Uh, we had a picture fly off the wall one time. And shoot all the way across the front room. Really? That was weird. Did you see it? Sitting there watching TV. About that much of that plaster come at it from behind it. It's obviously a house that was built by a wealthy family. When we first got here, I took a picture over in the field. I got really drawn to the woods over there. And there's... Me and my sister played out there a lot at night, and we were, we were pretty scared to stay out too long. And this, they said there's water, which I always get pulled to the water, to the creek. Every now and then I'd, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I'd hear like people talking. And I'd think my parents were up and they weren't and the TV was on maybe, you know, and there would be nothing on and it'd just be quiet. And I, I was like, I know I heard voices. Yeah. It sounded like a bunch of people talking. And it's just been kind of juxtaposed with lesser built rooms, <laughs> such as the funeral home yeah. in the back. I didn't believe in ghosts whatsoever, never seen or heard or felt anything until I actually moved into this place. Uh, not until I started cutting holes in the wall in this place that I actually experienced my first encounter in here. The second hole I cut was right underneath the stairs and I had a, a drill that I was using and it just slid across the floor. I love to see the cemetery, to see how those headstones have been engraved because that can tell us what the economic status of the family was. So I didn't pay any attention. Uh, then I started having things thrown at me, like uh, there's some pennies laying on the ground. Things were being thrown at me uh, throughout the day. Really interesting energy here. Uh, I love old homestead places anyway because they have a lot of natural family history. When I was in there, I dreamt of that room and the way the cornfields come in this tree it was in my dream last night. Sometimes if I focus on stuff, I'll, it'll come to me ahead of time, you know, and I'll, I'll pick up on stuff. But the first thing that I perceived as I came up the driveway is I don't feel particularly negative or evil energy, but what you have to be careful with with sites is people that are investigating, if people can hear about a haunted site, they can actually bring their own spirits, their own ghosts, their own demons in with them. Seems like the more and more people we get in this house, the more they're trying to tell us, they're trying to communicate. Because they had a group in here that's provoking and they got scratched. Ooh. And they wanted to be sure there wasn't anything demonic here. Mom that was demonically invested and they had a lot of problems. Do not want demonic spirits, you do not want negative spirits. Take a mess with your head. Yeah. yeah brought in, something was brought in. Just asking the entities in the house how they felt about the, um, the haunted house here. Kind of provoked a little bit, asking them if that bothered them. And while I was doing that, all of a sudden, Jen uh, took off running out of the house, screaming. She was yelling, get it off me, get it off me. Uh, she lifted up her shirt in the back, and there was just a huge scratch. Was actually bleeding, there was blood on the back of her pants, blood okay. on her shirt. Wow. So, it was Quite an interesting moment. Why you scratched them? Was it because they were getting you angry? This made you 
mad then? Is that what happened? They came in and was yelling at you and made you angry? Can you tap on something for us so we know you're, you understand? I know you're st still here. Can you tap on a wall or something, please? How many spirits are here? What happens is it puts a laser grid throughout the room and um, the, the shadows, the ghosts, the spirits will break the beam and you can see their form. When we walked in, I got all vibrated. I knew something was going to happen. Where the laser light is broken, are we seeing the shape of a spirit? A shadow cast all the way from the grave? Spirit people here, please come talk to us. Do we have Emma here with us? The PX box is said to translate a spirit's energy from radio waves into actual words. Video. Can we take your picture? Outside. Saw. Uh. They saw outside. Outside saw. Did you see us outside? It's okay. Door never slammed shut. Doesn't like the light. I've noticed they don't like the light at all. Mm. Um. Is there a Bob here? Did you hear that? Mm. Bob, did you just knock for us? Can you do that again, please? If the woman did freeze here in the 1970s and she's said to be buried in the cemetery, I wonder if she's a family member, because the last family member that lived in this house passed away in 79. It's the endless stream of people through this house, provoking an evil that dwells here. Are the spirits toying with us? This is a different kind of heat. It's like what happens when I run energy on people and do healing. It's 
smell a pipe in here. Like somebody was in here. It's really strange. It's like I was in this room before. Kind of a masculine energy. This house has about five different energy zones to it that are really interesting. Because now it's cool. My hand got very cool in here. Um,
was cool. You know, almost like you could hear, like you know, when cloth is rustling or something like that. You know. Maybe it was gusts of wind, like. Yeah. Just to her. Yeah. Her eye. Yeah, it's still, still on. Yeah, it was getting my elbow. I can't hear something like it was out here. I hear just faint tapping yes. or rustling or like something. Like a little rustling and stuff. But then I thought where I heard that, whatever was said, not the voice at that one point. <laughs> No, the, the here, I could, that whisper. Would you like for us to come upstairs and play a game? There was a guy who was uh, boarding here, I think in the 80s sometime, and he was uh, awakened by a little girl at the foot of his bed kind of tugging on his toe and she had a white down and red boots on. Oh. I'm camping with the... We're just interested in you. You got any questions? Is that the little girl? My hands are really hot. I'm not, I, I mean, it's hot in here, but it's, this is a different kind of heat. Is she going to hold hands with someone? Especially my left hand. Both hands are really hot. My left hand, which is a receiving hand, is like really, really hot and on fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? It would be just like if I was sitting and doing Darshan Blessing or doing something for lots and lots of people. It's like it's over here on the left side. Yeah, I can feel it. Maybe uh, the child spirit, which I put more happily around the females of the group. Rachel, could you stand on the floor in your boots? feeling when I came into the room of like an energy pattern that goes this way. Do you have a pet dog or cat? Who's with us right now? Can you make a noise? Dwayne, I think there's somebody in between us because I couldn't just sworn I saw a head and shoulders, but yet I know you're against the wall. Yeah, I'm standing right at the edge of the window with my hand against the window frame. Well, there is like a little interference looking kind of thing, but just could be the monitor here. Right about where that first picture was, is. Miss or something. We're just really flying fast. Was that you I saw? Are you hiding from us? See that red light is going far away? Not the one you're spinning around, the one that's stationary. Yeah. Not the one you're spinning around, the one that's stationary. Yeah. Yeah. If you can imagine a fluorescent green. I don't know exactly what it was. I mean, 
I, the door would just open. It, it moved back and forth, so I was thinking the wind. And like a, like a lemony yellow. The window. Is that authentic? I've got yeah. one on the window seal already. Yeah. The way the door was positioned, there's no way that any light from the outside road could get in, but there was just this, this like light white aura sitting around the, the edge of the door. Middle window. He's got his hand above. Uh, yeah. Okay. And I'm feeling very sad energy now, someone that used to spend a lot of time in this room. Uh, upstairs, it was actually the master bedroom. Would that be that one? Yeah, that big bedroom. That's interesting because we've got something like that. Oh, uh, okay. But yeah, because the door opens backwards towards all the roads, so yeah. it wouldn't hit the windows. And there's just a small little light that sat right there on the door. And they really liked it in here. And they love to look out the windows. And they're showing me, look, they're bored up. Look, they're bored up. I almost get a feeling of a name, Sarah, or an S name, or Karen, or Carolyn. It was a woman that was standing here and just like this, watching this thing for things up from the doorway. A small oval that went around the edge of the door. It was only about that tall when I was little. So I was thinking, okay, one of the kids have a flashlight, you know? And then there was nothing there. I come running downstairs. So I was like, somebody upstairs? Nobody was upstairs. They can feel what I interpreted as a little child reaching and groping around trying to grab onto my hand. But since my hand was balled up with my flashlight, I could feel these little fingers kind of The house is just bricks and mortar, some say. Those who visit here feel different. It was like an every night reoccurrence. I keep getting up and I'd look in there and there'd be nothing there. Some leave with just an uncomfortable feeling. Others flee with physical evidence of evil. Just as people can be possessed, so can places. But here, there's something always watching, waiting, lurking in the shadows. Every night, without fail, a small group gathers in historical Irvington to hear tales of its hallowed haunts. Al Hunter, who leads Irvington's ghost tours, is convinced it is an epicenter of haunting in the Indianapolis area. You know why we start our tours from here? You know what this building is that I'm leaning on? It's Irvington Masonic Lodge 6, 6, 6. And you can go right out to the front and look up at the top and see that it says Irvington Masonic Lodge 666. Part of his tour leads the curious past a small cottage nestled on a back street of this sleepy neighborhood. And it may not be so peaceful because it rests on the site of the 1894 murder of 10-year-old Howard Peitzel, the hands of the infamous and prolific serial killer, H.H. H. Holmes. The 1893 Chicago World's Fair was the biggest thing that ever hit these shores. Uh, 28 million people attended that fair. That was over half the entire population of the country at the time. Uh, Holmes was a doctor. He went, he graduated from the University of Michigan Medical School. Uh, he graduated in 1887, I believe it was. Uh, and he made his way to Chicago. Uh, found a place at 63rd and Wallace in a place called Inglewood. Uh, the bottom story were shops, top story were regular rooms, middle story were rooms that had no diagrams, no record of it. They had uh, doors that locked from the outside only, um, open gas valves in every, do in every room. Innocent young women flocked to Chicago to see the World's Fair attractions. And it was here Holmes lured them with the promise of cheap room and board. A grisly fate awaited them, though. Trapped in the rooms, Holmes often gassed them as he watched through a peephole and then experimented on their bodies to see how far they would stretch or sold their remains to universities for medical study. He confessed to 27 such murders, but the true number 
will never be known. Poor Howard's murder was born from a different scheme. Holmes and Howard's entire family were in on an insurance fraud scheme. Unbeknownst to the family, though, Holmes planned to kill them all, starting with Howard's father, P.F. Peitzel, allowing Holmes to keep all the money for himself. With the disappearance of their father, Holmes was entrusted with the care of three of the five Peitzel children, Alice, Nellie, and Howard. Traveling the Midwest with the children, Holmes awaited the perfect opportunity to dispose of these young witnesses to his swindle. Holmes rented a cottage in Irvington with the express purpose of doing away with Howard. But this was one murder that would not go unsolved. The charred remains of Howard Peitzel were found in a wood-burning stove on the property by Frank P. Geyer, an investigator with the Pinkerton Agency. Later at the trial, a witness testified that Holmes had installed the stove himself with little Howard watching, unaware that it would be his final resting place. And when asked why he hadn't simply hooked into the cottage's existing gas line, Holmes replied, gas is dangerous around children. And so we've been here about 10 years. And um, when we, we, we knew nothing about the history of the house when we moved in, we, uh, we didn't know anything except that we were very drawn to the house. The whole family was in on this scam, see? The whole Peitzel family was in with Holmes because yes. what they were going to do is fake Benjamin Peitzel's death and they were going to split the insurance money with Holmes. Well, what they didn't know was that Holmes planned to kill all of them. He had this ruse going on where, yeah, 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 you know, everybody's fine and Ben's fine and the kids are fine, but he was like knocking them off, you know, one by one. And I think that he had planned to kill Howard actually in Cincinnati. Right. But when they came and they were staying in a circle um, hotel down on the, the circle, there are um, writings, I think, by his sisters, was mm -hmm. it? Where they're writing letters to their mom that ever, never actually made it to their mom um, because Holmes would intercept them. But later they were found and where she, they were talking about Howard was being really mischievous. I mean, he was just getting on Holmes's nerves <laughs> And I just think Holmes couldn't take it anymore. He got out here, he found a cottage, he rented it, and murdered him. When the children would write letters back to their mother, they would use ciphers and code. In case the letters were exposed, their cipher for Holmes, 4, 18, 8. Or when translated, D, R, H. I think we could get some things outside because of where some things happened. But sometimes you get Um I started noticing like my printer would just turn on and start printing gibberish and um, I would start having problems with my computer. Well, you just kind of chalk it up to like electrical issues, whatever. And Even so though we had just had the house rewired. kind of it continued and the, we would hear voices and together and with the um, windows closed we would hear some voices and they were muffled and we realized that it wasn't anybody outside it was somebody in the house maybe sounded like they were in our closet we started to get a little bit leery three of the Faisal siblings out of the five were with uh, Holmes He stayed here temporarily. And he'd been in a circle for yeah. some reason in a hotel. He said he was surprised at his mother. We were talking about selling the house because we were getting very frightened. The activity started to pick up. All of a sudden, we go into the kitchen and all the drawers would be open. You could be standing in the kitchen with your back to the cabinets, and then when you turn around, everything's open. I had taken the three children all across the Midwest, stayed here temporarily, and then took the two girls up to Toronto, Canada. But I would wake up in the middle of the night and hear the front door just slamming. We're really going crazy here. Something's happening. There were a lot of nights that I didn't sleep. 
therapist know our therapist recommended that we contact Marilyn Isaac. And there's places on the earth where there's more activity and Irvington happens to be extremely active. And the next thing she said was, I got to get over there right away because you have a negative male spirit who is in the east side of your yard. You have two outbuildings on your property. And I said, no, we don't. You used to. And this very evil man spends his time in there and he is, he is on your property <coughs> and I have to get over there. When I left the boy here, the girls didn't know what happened to their brother. And unfortunately, he met his untimely demise on this property. He said he was deprived of his mother. I think it was that killing of the innocent, you know, when you yeah. harm, it's probably the worst sin there is to harm an animal and children, it's the harming of the innocent, so I think his karma kind of came back to haunt him here. When I see him now, it's almost like even though he crossed over at 10, he almost looks to me like he's older, like he's grown in spirit. Is there anybody that wants to come forward and talk with us tonight? There was one night that uh, I was completely awake. I just I wasn't sleeping. The the cat was jumping up and down on the bed. As soon as I pushed him down, I heard this voice right next to my face, and it was the the worst, most terrifying voice I've ever heard. And it was this real deep kind of horrible. It was just a horrible voice, and it said, uh, "Look at him." Anybody here that knows Mr. Holmes? Any family members? Any victims? Howard, are you here? Did you? Hi. Howard's here. He's hiding. Yeah, he's hiding behind something. My feeling with Howard, it's really interesting. Did, did Holmes ever hurt you, Howard? Would he punish you frequently? Did he lock you in small spaces like closet? Or maybe stuff you in a trunk at any time just to punish you? Did you ever catch him hurting your sisters? Was there anything you tried to do to stop him? to keep him from hurting people, your sisters, or you. you feel like there's anybody out in the hallway? you feel like there's anybody out in the hallway? you feel like there's anybody out in the hallway? Okay, he knew him as Dr. Holmes. Dr. Holmes. And he refer and he fed off of Howard. They, because of the age that Howard was, it's kind of like how poltergeist energy works with pubescent individuals there was like a conduit that Howard was for they fed off of each other's energy did you ever feel that Holmes was bad that he could hurt you at any time feel that uh, he did try to protect his sisters. I, I get a sense from what something he just showed me. It's kind of like a, he tried to deflect. It's like, a, okay, let's, let's be, let's do something bad over here so he doesn't do something to the girls. Let's do, let's redirect this. 
my gut feeling is it has to do with some things that they that they found out there. It's just kind of a strange sensation. I've been feeling this around me this evening, and, or that he's just hanging here in the background somewhere. Do you like to look at the full moon? Sit outside and watch the moon at night? Say yes. It got loud. There's something going on over there. The second time denied, it felt like somebody's clamped a hand close to the back of my neck. And once in the house and once out here. or right field over here, I heard. Yeah, but I mean, it was loud. Come on up, I'll show you something you won't ever see anywhere else but here. Don't be shy. That okay. is Holmes's Michigan graduation program with his name is Herman Mudgett on the back. Mm -hmm. The envelope that they came in that's signed by H.W. Mudgett himself. And this is probably the most interesting thing. This is a picture of Holmes as a University of Michigan medical student. Holmes is to all the way over to my right wearing his derby cap and if you were to blow that up, you'd see the cadaver. You see the cadaver, the sorry looking cadaver on the table. If you were to blow that up, you would see that Holmes has taken the pocket knife out of his pocket, opened it and stabbed it into the wooden table. And he's got his fingers on the corpse and his hand behind his back as if to say, hurry up and take the picture so I can start cutting on this corpse. <laughs> This is only the second time I've ever brought it out, so. And how did I get these? When I started doing the tours eight years ago, Holmes came from New, uh, Mudgett came from New Hampshire. His house still stands. I talked to his relatives and they just wanted the stuff gone. We're grateful for this home. We're grateful for this hallowed ground that is now restored to its original purpose and intention to free from violence, free from negative energy, negative memories. We ask only that which is of the light to remain. We're grateful. H.H. Holmes was one of this country's most prolific murderers, a killing machine with no afterthought, except for who would be his next victim. He left a macabre trail of death through the Midwest, and they have never been caught if it hadn't been for the hard investigative work of Geyer. That the beginning of the end for Holmes was here in Irvington may have been luck or providence, but for whatever reasons, the voices are clear and still echo through the cool night air. So the question is, do they exist? Is it real? For those who have journeyed with me, the evidence is hard to refute. Everywhere we have been, we have captured the unexplained in audio and with images. There are indeed ghosts walking among us. My senses are awake to them now, and I have trouble sleeping at night. Only one question remains. 
Whose dominion is this really? Ours? Or theirs? <laughs> 